Friends, my name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Welcome to Monday night. Uh, what is tonight? Micro Monday? Micro Monday. Welcome to Micro Monday. Uh, we're going to be working on the spreadsheet from last week. Um, now that I have all of the, the prop weights in there, I can actually dig into... I think the cat's scratching at the door again. I can actually dig into um, uh, the right stator widths for prop weights for good response times um so we're gonna get into that uh that uh, flying was my edit called fraser the queen fraser the queen ate my quad <laughs> fraser the crane ate my quad there we go now i don't sound like quipkey uh or um or um, Noel the Mole, for all you Fraser fans out there. Uh, yeah, check it out. There's a link to it in the chat. Uh, that's not the right music on it. It's got a copyrighted song that's edited down real nice. And then I cut it off before all the nighttime stuff and before the crash. Um, so in order to see the crash, you've got to uh, hit the link. And I just put it in the chat again, you know. As you do. William Barlow, Rick Zapata, Remy Tim, Richard, Mustang Pilot 1, 17 Music. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't, uh, until I pronounced it, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't it's M-E-U, capital Z-I-C-K. And I, 
Uh, Alexander Romanenko, Jeremy Hawkins, Eric Shannon, Experimental RC, Free Lojo, Frank Nicholas, Hub19, Mark A, Chomper FPV, Eric Shannon, Dog Life UK, Chopper FPV, Dauntless FPV, Corey H, Andy Cooper, Bed Habit RC, and Alexander again, and then Ram Jam. Um, if you want to hear your name, you got to get in here early and post something in the chat, and I read the first full page. Uh, if you would like to talk to me directly, this is what you need to do. You need to type Ciati FPV. You can put an at in front of it and it'll autocomplete if you're on a desktop. Um, or you can just type Ciati FPV. You gotta spell it right. C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V. No spaces. Not just Ciati. Not just FPV. Not Cootie. Not Kyodeo. Not Coyote. Ciati FPV. That'll light your comment up in orange, as you can see there, and then I will know that you're talking to me. The chat stays with these live streams. These live streams get viewed about a thousand plus times, so don't be a dick, because a thousand plus people will see you being a dick in the chat, and, you know, you don't want that. It's not a good look, right? We don't really have that issue. Uh, my audience is, is just absolutely amazing, and I love every single one of you guys for that. Um, but yeah, hang out, talk to each other. There's lots of amazing people in the chat. Some people know even more than I do. Um, and I take advantage of that. And when there's a question that I can't answer, I turn it over to you guys. Uh, <clears throat> we call ourselves the collective because that's just how nerdy we are. That was the goat. Uh, he's gonna be screaming again next Monday when we do our bi-weekly uh, Patreon and Super Chat based giveaways. If you'd like to support me so that I can continue to do this full time as I have been for almost a year now. It's been almost a year uh, since I got laid off and um, had a conversation with Joshua about what it really looks like to do FPV full time. And uh, the long and short of our conversation was him saying to me, if not now, then when? Um, so I dove into it not like... When, when you make your hobby uh, your career, the right way to do it um, is to work your ass off at your real career. Uh, mine is project management. I've been in that for almost 20 years now, um, ever since graduating university. Uh, so you work your ass off part-time with your hobby until you're making as much money with that as you are your full-time job, and then you just transition over smoothly. Um, I didn't do that at all. <laughs> I wasn't making any money with FPV, so I started from scratch. So it's been one hell of a long road. Uh, but you guys, many of you guys have come along with, have come along with me on that long, arduous, uh, at times quite painful road. Um, and that's pretty cool. And, uh, I would love for even more of you to come along with me because I'm just going to keep going until the wheels fall off. Um, this year has been absolutely phenomenal uh, for the channel, and uh, I'm just going to keep it going. Uh, if you want to be a part of that, head on over to CIDFPV.com. All the way up on the top, there's a link to Patreon. Uh, that's the closest thing that I have to a paycheck, and there's a lot of cool stuff going on over there, including daily live streams. Like, literally, every single day, I live stream, and then the patron folks uh, get the link to watch the replay of that. Um, those daily streams are public when I'm streaming. So if you subscribe and click the bell and all that stuff, um, you could for free get daily live streams from me. Um, or you could go over to the Patreon page and do the $3 tier, which amounts to 10 cents per live stream. So if a daily live stream from your gangly big tooth weird friend Siati uh, is worth 10 cents, there you go. Uh, there's also a link to my Etsy store with a whole bunch of random hardware that I have just sort of laying around that might help you. Um, and a whole bunch of really fun stickers. Uh, some holographic stickers. There's a nut grabber sticker. You can, come on, you can't live life without a nut grabber sticker. There's my logo and a magnet so that on your hatchback you can put it, like, when you open your hatchback you can put it there. And then when you close the hatchback it disappears so nobody knows that you're, a, you're an FPV nerd. Um, that says the collective and is very holographic. I've even got some little ones that go on your little goggles. Um, and then of course, we've got our boy, the man, the clam. Where the hell is it? There it is. Because guys, remember, 
諦めんなよ諦めんなお前どうしてそこでやめるんだそこでもう少し頑張ってみろよダメダメダメダメ諦めたら周りのこと思うよ応援してる人たちのこと思ってるなってあんたもうちょっとのところなんだろ俺だってこのマイナス10度のところしじみが取れるって頑張ってんだよ絶対やってみろ必ず目標達成できるだからこそイエローピーだああ、はい。Enough of Clay Man. <laughs>、uh, I, I totally forgot that, that I used to do that with the. With the it's not picture in picture, but you guys know what I mean.、Uh, Mark A tagged me and said hello. Chomper says hello. Alexander says, if we're going to make this interesting, can you at least write some macro scripts for Excel so it calcs this for us?、Uh, I cannot, Alexander. I, I, I don't even know what half of those words meant, to be totally honest with you.、Um, I've. I've used Excel forever in my professional career, but it's just like a piece of graph paper to me. <laughs> like, as a project manager, I've never actually had to do anything with Excel other than just type, type, to just data entry, basically. So I've,、uh, I don't know Excel at all, but、uh, I've never let that hold me back. I don't know why I got so angry. LCV,、uh, LCV FPV says、uh, having jello issues with long range 4 inch quad with an HD split camera. Any idea how to go about fixing it? Um, LCV FPV, my guess would be that you're using motors that are too notchy.、Um, so tag me again.、Uh, in that tag, copy and paste this comment.、Uh, and I need you to tell me what the frame is, what the motors you're running are, what propellers you're running, and、um, talk to me about how your flight controller is soft mounted. And if it's not soft mounted, There's your problem.、Um, getting、uh, onboard split cameras to、uh, not have jello is very, very difficult、um, to the point where it took me about a year and a half to really figure it out.、Um, and like everything has to be worked out. Like the, you gotta have the right frame. Uh, you gotta have your flight controller soft mounted properly. You gotta have nice, smooth running motors. You gotta have well balanced props.、Um, you gotta have everything nailed down. Like, you can't have the battery jiggling around. You can't have loose screws anywhere. Like, it is, it is difficult to do.、Um, but I have a ton of edits on my channel here、uh, with three and four inch rigs、uh, with beautifully clean、uh, split footage. Uh, one of those edits、uh, is called Four Inch Motion、uh, from a Drift Event.、Uh, and then there's a bunch of Acrobrat、uh, killing. There's one called Killing a Set of 1507 Zings in One Day、uh, on the Acrobrat. And there's a bunch of other Acrobrat ones. So,、um, yeah, you guys can check that out if you want because it is possible. It's just very difficult.、Um, I've probably spent. Hundred hours figuring it out and and a couple grand easily.、Um, just trying all different motors and frames and cameras and and just yeah, it's it's difficult, but it's something that I can definitely help you guys out with.、Uh, one of the other things over on cidfpv.com is a link to my Fiverr page.、Uh, that is soon going to become going to go away. I'm going to move from Fiverr to my own website, which is fpvinstructor.com. Um, where I can help you spec out your rigs so that you have a chance of, of getting jello free onboard footage.、Um, I can help you tune because the tune also needs to be there.、Um, I can help you fly better in the simulator.、Um, you know, I've got a little over four years of piloting and I want to help you guys with that. Previous to FPV, I was a、uh, driving instructor at Autocross and Track Days. I had a little over 10 years into that、um, and I really kind of fell in love with. Learning a, a, a skill that's very, very difficult that you have to really focus on and, and put the time in,、um, and then helping other people get through that process a lot quicker than, than I did、um, because it took me many, many, many years to, to start winning、uh, regional championships、uh, at autocrosses and whatnot. And I want to do the same thing for you guys.、Um, you know, if, if you've got more money than time,、uh, that's a perfect scenario where I can help you. You know, I can save you a couple months worth of practice and stick time by just relaying some of the things that I've figured out in over four years.、Um, or if you just want to get better as a pilot really quick, right? Like, 
how much money are you going to spend crashing over and over and over and over again versus spending 40 bucks for half an hour or 80 bucks for an hour with somebody that's been through all of that and can give you a bunch of shortcuts to, to get you flying a little bit better. Because let's be honest, being able to fly really good feels really good. Um, it, it just... Yeah, it just feels really good to be able to confidently get up in the air and absolutely shred and then take that footage and make edits with it that people go, oh, damn. Right? 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 Uh, speaking of edits, I got a new one coming out. Well, I mean, it's it's a new edit, but uh, it's actually from, like, 2019. <laughs> um, I've been working on it on the laptop. It's, uh, it's, um... It's pretty good. It's uh, the 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 footage and the and the time of day and and like everything is uh, <laughs> and and the song choice. I, I I like everything so much that I've been working on this for um, about a year on and off. Just like I'll put like a half an hour in, put like an hour in. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. Here's uh. I don't know if this will actually work, but... Oh, it'll work. Hold on. See if I can get copyright struck. Look at this spot! Tell me this spot's not ridiculous. Look at this! This is from so long ago, it pisses me off. I was a way better pilot back then. Ready? Ready? Oh! How did he do that? Oh! So yeah, there you go. There's a... There's an exclusive! First look! I'm important! It's exclusive! Nobody cares! That got a little weird uh tiago says was missing his corporate spreadsheet so much yeah right oh god i'll tell you what um uh in the past year like all of the struggling all of the uh not knowing where the the rent is going to come from all of the the everything has been really well worth um not having to work in a corporate office <laughs> like like don't get me wrong i i um i miss the money um and i miss the security and i miss the health care um uh but yeah i don't know there also like for for people with mental illness um working in, in offices is is extremely difficult um people with mental illnesses do really well working for themselves um and I'm, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to kind of understand that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very different. And God only knows how long this, this can be a thing, right? I mean, who, who even knows how long FPV will exist if, if, if somebody really fucks up, um, and does something stupid, uh, it could bomb the whole thing, right? And, and the FAA could, uh, man, I, sh I shouldn't have just said the B word. You can't say that on an airplane. What if I was a bombardier? Um, yeah, who knows? But, uh, like I said earlier, I'm just going to rock it till the goddamn wheels fall off and, uh, come with me on the journey. I would love to have you. Abraham saying, hey, forevermore saying good evening from Delaware. CMYK FPV in the house. Look at this, guys. Look at our boy CMYK FPV coming through with the dope ass logo for FPV therapy. So over on uh, Facebook, there's a link to this on, uh, there's a link to this on CIDFPV.com at the very bottom. Uh, this is FPV therapy over here on Facebook. It's a Facebook group uh, with a whole bunch of us in here sharing our experiences, talking about um, depression, anxiety, PTSD, uh, whatever ails us. 
And uh, CMYK FPV made a series of really, really cool uh, thumbnail images, not thumbnail, uh, cover images for us. So a uh, huge shout out to Steven. Uh, if you guys need graphic design work done, hit up CMYK FPV. Uh, he's also on Instagram. Just search for CMYK space FPV. Um, yeah, love it, man. Thanks again, brother. That looks super cool. Um, let me know how much time that, uh, that you have in that. And uh, as we discussed, I will match you for whatever you want over on Fiverr. Um, scrolling down in the chat, uh, we've got Jonathan Steber saying, nice shirt. Yeah, this is, um, this is a shirt from Charleston. So Comcast, um, a, f a bunch of years ago, Comcast rolled out this um, pilot program. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to uh, to screw over their uh, to to see how badly they could screw over their customers, um, and one of the cities that they did that in was Charleston, uh, and what they did is they limited our uh, internet usage to uh, two hundred gigs per month, and then they charged us uh, was it I think it was ten dollars for every extra fifty gigs that we went over. Um, so the first month, so, and of course they didn't tell anyone, um, because you know, it was a pilot program. It was, they were just testing it, right? That mean that, that makes it totally okay to fuck all your customers over and charge them three, $400 all of a sudden for no reason. And, and then give them a hard time and make them wait on hold for an hour to try to get anybody that knows what that pilot program even is. Um, so there you go. I kind of already just told you what was going on. Um, so yeah, one of the local, um, at the, at the, uh, one of the farmer's markets in Charleston, um, one of the shops that made t-shirts made a run of these shirts, uh, and they just absolutely blew up and like everybody bought them and, and, um, yeah, so, uh, down with, con I, I've, I've never, um, I've never experienced, I, I've, it was bad, man. It was real bad. Like, I I spent so much time on the phone with them trying to – it, it was just such a nightmare because you call them and then the idiot that picks up first, right, has no idea what you're talking about because it's only in – they did it in like four or five cities throughout the entire U.S., right? So, of course, the person in India has absolutely no idea. So then they send you to somebody else and they send you to somebody else and they hang up on you. And then you call back and you go through it again and then they and then the fourth person hangs up on you and then you do it again and the second person hangs up on you. Um, and then eventually you get through to somebody and they say, oh, yeah, that's 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 what it is. What's your credit card number? Uh, you owe us $480 uh, in overages. Um, and then you scream and yell and try to talk to their manager and their manager can't talk to you and they say they're going to call you back and they never call you back and then you do the whole goddamn thing all over again you get some other asshole. Uh, yeah, Comcast can burn in hell as far as I'm concerned. Sorry if any of you guys work for them. Um, but that was one of the worst experiences I've ever had with any company. Um, and of course now, <laughs> the, <laughs> the apartment complex... What happens is I, I, I tend to choose apartment complexes that are the cheapest I can possibly find. Um, and usually those are the ones with like very old utilities. And then those are the ones that only have Comcast or AT&T as internet options. And AT&T is absolutely abysmal. Um, Nick, Nick Sebring says, this noise is awful. Oh no, is the mic doing it again? Oh, come on, really? Um, hold on, I'm scrolling down. Is the, is the mic doing the thing again, guys? I'm scrolling all the way, all the way to the bottom. It looks like it's doing it in the volume meter. Oh, mic's fine? Okay, cool. Oh, all right, good deal. Uh, what were you talking about? Uh, uh, whoever said that. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, back into it. Uh, Huff19 says, uh, fried my Mobula 6 board. What other flight control AAO can you recommend next? Uh, the only one that I can recommend, Huff19, is the Newbie Drone 
V1, but unfortunately they are out of stock um, and have been out of stock for a long time. Um, uh, so you're just going to have to wait as soon as they are back in stock. Um, uh, Dalton uh, is now working for Newbie Drone, and he's been checking every morning uh, because I need that board. De I need like three or four of those boards desperately. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, you're just going to have to wait uh, unless in, unless it's new enough. If if you just bought that Mobula 6 board, get in touch with whoever you bought it from and say, hey, send me a new one. Uh, and usually they will because... It's a known quantity that Happy Model stuff just catches on fire at, at pretty much random. Uh, Avery the Ham says, "Greatest shirt ever for the worst company. Greatest shirt ever for the worst company ever. Where'd you get it? Yeah, so you guys are not going to be able to get this shirt. Um, it is. It's made by a very small little company in Charleston called. I don't know. What's that say? They don't have a website or any yeah, you're not gonna be able to get it. They don't have a website or anything. Although I bet you if you type I hate Comcast t shirt into Google, somebody makes it. Um, but yeah, they the they're a tiny little they just do it for fun, um, on the side. Um, so you won't be able to get this shirt, but I bet you somebody will find it. If somebody finds it, drop it in the chat, uh, for everybody because um, uh, Comcast is absolutely the worst. Uh, Ruby Tim says, "Did you watch the footage that was released from the Mars rover landing? It might have made uh, it might have made me cry. I'm manly, but damn, I love space flight. Um, I have watched a little bit of it, um, and yeah, the the just like across the board, man. Like the the fact that the landing was done um, by a female, by an Indian female too. Like just across the board, the the whole the whole thing was was ah, it's just so cool, man. NASA." Uh, uh, Forevermore says, auto is just at symbol then CI, LOL. Oh, got it, got it, Forevermore. Speedy Turtle FPV is in the chat. He says, can't wait to see that Speedy Cares package. Hey, Speedy Turtle, I am going to drop a moderator privilege, privilege on you uh, so that you can drop a, if you want to, um, uh, so that you can drop a Discord link into the chat here uh, for people to get in on this box. And uh, and in a little bit, we're going to look at the box, and I'm going to show you guys all the stuff that um, that I've added to it. But um, to give you guys a, a, a quick what's what, who's who, um, what happened to the chat? There it is. Uh, Speedy Turtle has three boxes like this that are being shipped all over the country. Um, and the, the thought process is it's a whole bunch of FPV stuff that each person donates to and takes from. Um, and so, yeah, like your old stuff that you're not really doing anything with that doesn't necessarily really have value or you just don't feel like selling on FPV Exchange... Um, like, like this, right? Like, like this little, this little barrel plug extender. You're not going to sell this on FPV. I mean, you could, you totally could on FPV exchange. You would just search for barrel extender and then flip the switch and like instantly you would be selling it. Um, it's really insane how easily you can sell stuff on FPV exchange, but, um, you know, this is a, a just such a cool idea. Um, I have had a, a box that I've been putting more and more and more stuff in, um, and it's kind of cool. This box that came from Speedy just happened to have exactly the right amount of space in it for all of my stuff in my box. I, I was going to do the same thing and start shipping it all around, um, but Speedy's doing a better job than I would do, so it's kind of perfect that um, I was able to put all my stuff in here. Um, so yeah, and I even, uh, I shouldn't do that, hold on, I even, uh, I tagged it, look at that, CIDFPV was here, right? Um, so yeah, we're going to look at that in a minute, uh, but I do want to get caught up on chat first. Shitters. I wish that wasn't empty. Uh, free Lojo. Thank you for that. Frank Nicholas says, what's up with the door window covering? Um, just trying to cut down on the echoes in here, basically. 
Uh, scrolling down, B Man FPV says, "What's up?" Uh, Free Lojo says, uh, "And resistance is not futile. It's a lipo killer." Uh, Forevermore says, "Right way, ha ha ha." Um, right way. What were we talking about? That was at ten oh nine. It's now ten thirty. Ugh. All right, let me get caught up. Uh, Frank Douglas says, "Glad to see you see you doing this full time." Uh, Jeremy Hawkins says, "What do you recommend for me to learn long range FPV YouTube?" Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, who? Who do you recommend for me to learn long range? Um, uh, Remy Tim, hook, uh, hook. Well, first of all, Remy Tim. Uh, but uh, Remy Tim is also going to be a much better resource for you um, uh, on that. I think the big thing that you want to do though is hop onto Facebook and join the Facebook group called uh, Long Range Hooligans. Uh, that's where the majority of the info is on, on flying long range. Uh, but hopefully Remy Tim will be able to give you a recommendation or two for somebody here on YouTube. Um, I, I've never, I've never come across, I mean, I've never looked, but I've never come across anybody on YouTube that has, that's putting out like technical content on long range, but there's gotta be somebody, there's gotta be a couple people. Robert Rainer says, happy to see your subs gaining some momentum again. Persistence will pay off, I truly believe. Thank you, brother. Uh, Eric Shannon says, I want a small drone to bridge 5-inch and tiny whoop. I don't know. Uh, I, do, I know I don't want a toothpick, and I'm thinking 3-inch, but I'm unsure between 2 to 3S. What would you recommend? Um, Eric, uh, tell me a little bit more about... Um, and you're going to need to copy and paste this comment because by the time I read your next comment, it's going to be like 20 minutes from now and I'm going to forget. Um, tell me more. So one of the things that I do on Fiverr is you can book me for a session to spec out a build. And, and the beginning of that uh, Zoom or Skype call is um, a whole series of questions that I've got, such as like, what are you going to do with the rig? Do you need HD? Um, uh, what, if so, what are you going to do with the footage? Uh, what kind of a runtime are you looking for? Um, so just sort of think of things like that and then um, tag me again, copy and paste this comment here um, because that's really what I do. Like for me, it, it doesn't really make sense to like just build for the sake of building. Um, just like, like you know, four, four inch right now is like the flavor of the week. Um, and like a lot of people are just mindlessly diving into four inch and just building a four inch rig. And like, I guess it kind of makes sense because you, you can do that and then you can fly it around and, and figure out where it fits and, and like what you can maybe do with it. But unfortunately I have a, so th this has happened a lot. This is, this has happened with two inch. This has happened with two and a half inch. This has happened with three inch. Um, this has happened with toothpicks and a lot of people will do that and then they'll realize that that rig has no home, right? Because they fly like, because they have like a set of sort of, uh, you know, I don't know. They have places where they fly. They have a, a noise level that they need to stay within. For example, um, they have sort of a set of like requirements almost and just randomly building something uh, without thinking about those requirements and whether or not it's going to fit within them can lead you to have a rig that just sits up on the wall forever, right? That never flies, that you've got two, three, four hundred bucks tied up in. Um, so I really, really, really try to prevent that. And, and that's one of the things that I think I can save you guys quite a bit of money with, right? Um, so yeah, that's really how I approach building. Um, there needs to be a very specific like purpose for it. And there always is, right? There's always like, I fly in my backyard only, and my backyard is is half an acre. Like that right there is is almost enough for me to to be able to say, okay, here here's here's what you want to do. Um, so wrap your head around that a little bit. Drop me another comment here, and I'll give you a little free fiver session, um, specking out a build for you. Um, the imposter is here. He says, hey, you know I love it when you talk about me. Um, uh, Forevermore says, but I only catch half live streams, so then it's 0 0.20 cents per. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna have to just suck it up, I guess, Forevermore. Uh, but what's nice is, on Patreon, you get the links to the replays of the daily live chats, live streams, so you can play them at any time. 
Uh, Nathan Hawk says, does not do, CIDFPV does not do toothpicks. I don't, yeah, I, um, uh, when I first started flying in 2017, uh, I guess it was, um, my very first rig was the uh, Emax Baby Hawk, the original, which was an all plastic toothpick. And I started upgrading that rig and over the course of like six months, it turned into a very lightweight, three-inch bi-blade propellered um, 2017 toothpick, essentially. And I flew that thing, I mean, I flew thousands and thousands and thousands of batteries through that um, over like 2017 into 2018. Um, and eventually, I just kind of burned it out. Like, toothpicks are kind of like, a mix of like RC car and, and quad in that like you pretty much just drive them around, right? They don't really have any momentum to do any kind of like throws or backward stuff or sideways stuff um, without really like leaning into it. Um, and yeah, eventually I just kind of did everything that I could do just sort of driving this thing around the sky. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, I got a long, a, a, I flew a ton of batteries and had a ton of fun um, with that toothpick way back when. Um, but it's just, yeah, it, um, I'm just sort of done with that flying experience. And, and now I build things that have a little bit more momentum um, that I can get some good off throttle chucks out of. Um, and that for me, in, in my sort of piloting growth um, that was the next level of, of like learning. Um, and yeah, that's how I now sort of build all of my rigs. Everything that I build is going to have a, a pretty specific ratio of all up weight to the size of the propellers, because that's really what, um, that's really where the, the off throttle momentum comes from is, is that ratio of, of all up weight to the size of the propellers. Um, the, the propellers never stop spinning, right? The propellers are always, this is a terrible example because it's got ducts on it, but actually, no, it's not. The, the propellers act like these ducts because the propellers are always spinning, right? Even when you're off the throttle, the propellers are always spinning. So they're always causing air to move around, right? They're, they're sucking air in from the top and they're pushing air out in the bottom. At idle, they're not moving a lot of air, but they're still moving air, right? So the propellers, the size of the propellers, just like these ducts, are a parachute. Um, so as soon as you come off the throttle, all you've got is the all-up weight of the rig and the, the size of the, of the propellers to either slow it down or let it keep traveling. Um, and that's how air works. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, and, and the, the other, the, the big, my big issue to be totally honest with you guys with toothpicks is that they just don't crash well. Um, bi-blade propellers, every single time you put a motor into the concrete, the bi-blade propeller just moves out of the way and the, the motor bell bangs right into the concrete. Um, I've got, man, I went through so many motors. Um, and then, yeah, it's just it's it's just I build rigs that are more durable now and, and they're they're more durable even though they're heavier, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, to each his or her own. Uh, Alexander says, just remember, enjoy the evening, uh, even if this message is 30 plus minutes old. Uh, Metal Dirt Skin with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, brother. Uh, can I still hire you to help me with editing on Fiverr? I use Resolve and not Premiere. Um, you can metal. I'm not going to be able to help you out with any, um, and, and editing is going to be something that I, I also offer on uh, fpvinstructor.com. Uh, I'm not going to be able to help you with any of like the technical elements of Resolve, like click here to do this or click there to do that, um, which is not really my strong suit anyway. Like I barely know that stuff in Premiere. Um, the, the value that I'm going to be able to give you in editing is when to cut, where to cut, um, color correction stuff, um, sort of like kind of storytelling almost a little bit. Um, I mean, everything that you see from my edits, right? Like if, if you, if you like the way that my edits flow and how one thing cuts into the next thing and like the way that I sequence stuff and the way that I choose music and 
um, that's the stuff that I'm going to be able to help out with. Um, what to click to do X or Y or Z. Um, fortunately, you can just figure out from by just typing your question into YouTube. That's the one amazing thing that I do constantly in Adobe Premiere is just go to Google or YouTube and type in Adobe Premiere, how do I do a circle close transition? And 80 videos come up uh, explaining how to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I can help out in with in terms of editing. And to be quite honest, that like those things that I'm going to be able to help you out with, those are the things that have a lot more value anyway, right? Like any any idiot can teach you where to click in in any of these softwares, um, and you can probably go on Fiverr and find somebody to do that with you for really cheap. Um, but you'll be hard pressed to find somebody who's been editing car and now FPV videos for the last 12 years um, that has a the understanding that I have as to, yeah, where to cut, when to cut, little tricks like move this cut back one one thirtieth of a second and it's gonna and it's gonna mesh a little bit better. Um, that's what you know on, on my YouTube channel you'll notice it's been around for like 12 years. I've been I was making car edits. Uh, back when that was my main hobby, and then that trans transitioned right into FPV. Um, so you can you can sort of watch my uh, growth uh, as as an editor, and, and it is actually something that I went to school for um, at uh, the College of New Jersey. Um, so yeah, let's talk metal. Uh, Forevermore says, "Whose shirt are you? <laughs> Whose shirt?" <laughs> Uh, we already talked about that. Um, it's a little shop in, in Charleston. You won't be able to get it, but you can probably find somebody else that makes this a shirt with the same thing on it because everybody hates Comcast. Richard says, uh, I Google random Excel formulas that help me organize my finances. That's a really good idea. Um, Dauntless FPV says, my macros have a lot of power. If P is power and I have really smooth motors on this toothpick, then is adding D a must because stock PS the tune has a lot of power make any sense it was making sense until that last part B oh because stock peas the tune has a lot of power make any sense um uh, uh Dauntless, hit me on hit me on Messenger. Um, we talk on Messenger all day, every day, anyway. Uh, hit me on there. We'll work through it. Mark Torgensen says, "Evening." B man says, "Does anybody think the shirt should say I hate AO boards?" Oh, that would be a good shirt. Uh, Eric Shannon says, "I want a small drone to bridge." Uh, uh, cool. So. Um, we already talked about that one. B man says, "Am I right or am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Right?" Needle nose Ned. Uh, <laughs> Toxic FPV says, I used to work for Comcast. I need that shirt in my life. <laughs> I thought you were going to go the other way with that, Toxic. Good to know that even former employees hate the company. Dauntless says, I'm trying to find some music. What parts of Spotify did you look in? Uh, like, uh, like your music choice. Uh, I can find some good stuff, but nothing longer than three minutes. Um, I mean, trying to find... There's really no reason to use copyright free um, music uh, on edits. Like, I'm doing it because my livelihood is these live streams, and YouTube's policy on copyright strikes for live streamers is fucked. Um, and they, it, it's almost like they specifically try to punish streamers. Um, if you don't plan on making a career out of doing live streams there's really no reason to use copyright free music um it, it's just totally pointless so just fire up yeah just just go through spotify and uh find all your favorite stuff and and away you go um usually you can um uh i mean i i always recommend you spend the 99 cents when you find the song that you want to use to to properly buy it and get a good quality mp3 of it um but there's nothing to stop you from pulling the the song that you find that you love on spotify up in soundcloud 
and then grabbing the link to SoundCloud and dropping it into one of the SoundCloud to MP3 rippers, or there's even YouTube to MP3 rippers um, that you can just Google. Uh, but spend the dollar. Go to Apple Music Store or Amazon and just spend the 99 cents. It's it's the absolute least you can do to help another artist, right? Like another creative. Um, whether I like it or not, I've, I, I'm now a creative, right? Like that is my livelihood. Um, and so, yeah, if, if I was making music, I would want your dollar <laughs> and it's only a dollar, right? Um, so it's just like, yeah, how many edits are you really going to do? 20 a year? It's 20 bucks. That's pretty good. Um, and it'll be a better quality version. When, when you do the ripper stuff, it's, there's no low end and there's the highs get chopped off too. So it, it doesn't really sound all that great. Um, through headphones at least. Um, Sick of Life 90 says, as long as you hate Comcast, you're all good. Uh, Tiago says, uh, at Eric Shen, do you want to do, uh, do you want to, to fill, do you want to film the flights? If so, the Ciati FPV Acrobrat build is an option. Very true. Uh, Aver the Ham says, arrests him. <laughs> Uh, Speedy Turtle says, I see Speedy Turtle and Nevin in your Facebook Messenger, lol. Um, yeah. Uh, I gotta be more careful about pulling up my, uh, my Facebook on stream. Ah! YouTube just did the thing. Scrolling back up. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Uh, there we go. Frank Nicholas says, I don't hear any noises. Fishy Stitches says, no noise here. Remy Tim says, Mike's fine. Audio is fine. All right. Good, good, good. Dauntless says, nope. Just fading background noise filtering. Uh, Remy Tim says, nothing is wrong. Uh, Richard says it's fine. Chomper says, I think he meant the music. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, Leadfinger says, made a Velocidrone lobby called Ciati Flight Club. Fly and watch party. Very cool. Um, Tiago says, Eric Shannon, let's ask for, uh, let's ask Ciati FPV for help. Those motors might be uh, underpowered depending on the props. Uh, I'm looking up for Eric Shannon's comment. I don't see it. Uh, let me just keep going. Hopefully he tagged me again. Uh, hey, there we go. Uh, Eric Shannon says, I'm building a 3-inch to train for 5-inch, and this is what I have. HDLRC Arrow 3, Diatone Mamba F4, 5 Mini, TBS Crossfire Nano, Foxy Eraser Micro, iFlight Zing Nano 1103, 10,000, Emacs Avan 3, 2.43. Um... So, Eric, um, the biggest problem there is that those motors are way, 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 way too small. Um, you, for for that propeller, for, for any three-inch tri-blade propeller, um, you're going to need a, at bare minimum, uh, a 1306 or even better, a Brother Hobby 1504 and a half. Um, if you go back like two or so weeks, I have a whole bunch of live streams about building a Rip Squeak Micro. Um, if you're looking to train for five inch, that is what you want, hands down. Um, so stalk those builds, uh, those or those live streams rather. Um, I go over in them a million times the part selection. Most of the parts are down below though in, in my description. Um, that you want, uh, but yeah, check out those live streams uh, on that build. That that's pretty much what you want: a BQE Rip Squeak Micro uh, frame with the new generation arms that are 12 by 12 motor mount. You have to specifically mention that in the note. Um, and then Brother Hobby 1504 and a half motors in the highest KV you can get. Uh, you want 4S 450 or 550 mAh batteries. Uh, those props will be great. You can run that uh, Crossfire Nano. You can run that uh, Diatone Mamba. Uh, you can run that Foxy Eraser Micro. Um, so yeah, uh, those 1103 motors are not going to work on anything other than like a 2-inch propeller. 2-inch propeller is really absolutely as big as you can get away with if you want something that performs half decent um, on, on that small of a motor. Um, I don't even run those on, uh, I actually run 1204s on 2 inch props. I, I think 1103s are even too small for a 2 inch prop. Um, but I have pretty high standards. I, I like my rigs to fly good. Um, so 
Dauntless says, link to the shirt in Discord. There is a link to the Discord channel on CIDFPV.com all the way down at the bottom. Uh, if you want full access on the Discord channel, you're going to have to join Patreon. It's three whole dollars a month, and that'll get you access to all the, uh, all the good stuff. Uh, looks like Frank dropped a link to I Hate Comcast shirts. I knew it. I, I absolutely knew that they existed. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the one. That's the same font and everything. Artisan Tees, that's them. They have a website now. Good for them. Good f farts. Page not found. And then now here they are. Look at you guys. Oh my god. I bet you they got in trouble for that shirt. I don't see that shirt. Cat video. <laughs> Come on, come on, please, please. Nah, they got in trouble. That sucks. Even more reasons to hate Comcast. They went after this this poor little shop. I'll bet. Wow, that's super scummy. Um, but yeah, that's them, Artisan Tees. Look at these guys. Wow, very cool. There's a link, uh, really cool, um, really cool dude that runs that, that shop out of Charleston. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. Look at Google coming through. Uh, good stuff, guys. Uh, Aethix FPV got the HD3 goggles today. Very cool. He's been waiting for them for like two weeks. Uh, Speedy Turtle dropping a link to his Discord. Very cool. Um, Dauntless says, I almost want to convert my Baby Hawk into what you did. My OG Baby Hawk sucks. Yeah, the original Baby Hawk was pretty brutal. Um, luckily, there's a lot, a lot of of toothpick frame options nowadays. Dauntless says those Emacs Baby Hawks have crazy M1.4 motor mounting screws that kind of suck. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They also have individual ESCs, which on a micro is just about the worst idea ever. But if you want to learn, if you want to teach yourself to solder, don't do it on those. <laughs> Unless you want to quit the hobby over and over and over again. Um, but if you do, you'll get good at soldering pretty quick. Uh, Vicious Stitches says, what's your favorite genre of music to fly to lately? Um, ever since the, the beginning of FPV, um, I didn't really listen to dance music in, until FPV. Um, but it just fits. It just fits so beautifully with with the way that we move around in the air. Um, so yeah, and and what's cool is I've I've actually built sort of an appreciate not sort of like for real an appreciation for uh, for dance music um, through FPV, and and that's great. I, I've I've always sort of been like a little bit of a music chameleon. Um, I at the age of like nine years old, my parents put me into uh, private drum lessons with a ridiculous uh, jazz drummer named Tony DiNicola up in New Jersey, um, who later in life I found out, because uh, I was too young to really understand this at nine, uh, later in life I, I realized that like he was sponsored by Slingerland and like played with every single jazz great you could possibly imagine. I remember his waiting room that I used to sit in. It was like, it was funny to me because he had um, black and white pictures of him with all these other musicians and he had them all framed and the frames were all, I mean like right next to each other all around the little, his little waiting room in, in the back of his house um, all from like, like the floor to the ceiling, just like everywhere. Absolutely. And, and like when I was little, I it was just whatever. It was just funny that there were so many pictures, but when I went back um, to visit him when I was in college and I hadn't taken lessons from him in, in forever, um, I actually looked at those pictures and I, like almost 
pooped. Like, it, it's just him with everyone. Everyone. Name a jazz musician. Him with them. Um, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, and my parents were, uh, grew up in the, in the 60s and 70s, and, and they're, um, so, you know, they got me, of course, into the classic rock kind of thing, and then they also really loved classical music. My, my father was, uh, worked for a, um, a hi-fi shop, and, uh, had <laughs> probably f- 30, 40 grand worth of, um, hi-fi gear in our living room, uh, including a set of Bozak speakers um, that were, I shit you not, uh, this tall and about this wide. Uh, each, uh, I, I mean, I guess they're called floor standers, but they're more like small homes. Uh, each one of these had four 12 inch drivers, uh, six mid range drivers, and eight tweeters. Um, and <laughs> And my dad used to always make me laugh by uh, opening up all the windows in the front of our house, and he had a, a sound effects CD with the sounds of a of a, a thunderstorm, like a, a thunderstorm rolling in. <laughs> he would he would turn that up. This is when like CDs were brand new, um, and he would turn that up real loud, and then we would sit and we would watch as all the neighbors started to scramble around and close all their windows. <laughs> Um, and, and so like being a hi-fi nut, um, he was also into classical music and, and, and just a lot of different, um, music. So I, um, I, yeah, I grew up with a very broad, um, everything but country, basically, uh, uh, appreciation for different types of music. And, uh, yeah, so I, it's. I guess if, like, I only had to pick one genre forever, it would have to be classic rock. Um, but, yeah, I like a lot of different types of music. I really do. Uh, Jeremy Hawkins says, How much cash to teach me to understand PIDs? Realistically, Jeremy, $3. Um, if you join my Patreon page, I have quite a few articles in there talking about PID tuning, explaining PID tuning. Um, and I tend to be able to explain these things pretty well because... I spent a lot of time as a, as a driving instructor trying to figure out how to explain really difficult concepts um, such as like suspension geometry and um, how tires work and slip angle and, and all these things that are really tough to kind of weave together. Um, so yeah, I've, I've developed a pretty good ability to kind of break things down and, and explain them in a way that actually makes some confusing things in a way that makes sense. So uh, most people who've gone on my Patreon page, and uh, here's the trick, because there's a million posts on there. Um, on the top of the Patreon page, there are uh, a couple of buttons that you can click. Uh, when I put a, when I tag each post, um, it, it puts those tags on the top there. And the tag that I use for, uh, is Tech Talk. Um, and it's the tag with like the second most hits. Um, so if you hit that, it'll slim all those down. It'll only show you the tech talk. And there's a whole bunch of pit stuff in there. Um, and then if that's not enough, uh, half an hour, probably, I could get you a really solid understanding um, through one of my Fiverr gigs. Like, uh, probably it, the most sensible thing would be like the tuning Fiverr gig. Um, and yeah, and probably in, in about a half an hour, I could explain it to you in a way that... that that is relatable. Um, it's a lot easier to do it one on one because I can I can get a feeling from you as to like how you understand things and and like what analogies I can make to you that are going to make sense because relating it to cars doesn't work for everyone. For example, right? Um, so yeah, there you go. Double uh, A says, "Hey, there he is. Howdy there, Aaron, buddy. What's up, Double A? Uh, scroll, 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 scroll." 1049 I'm at in the comments. Ooh, I'm only 10 minutes behind. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, Freelojo says, pin stacks are risky because boards shift in a crash. Uh, anybody thinking about doing a stack with pins, uh, in, save yourself the trouble. Uh, just put your hand down on the desk and smash it with a hammer as hard as you can because that's the same exact experience um, as buying a stack with, uh, with, the ES, with any pins 
ESC pinned to the flight controller, flight controller pinned to the VTX. It is the worst idea ever. I absolutely 100% guarantee you that it will break within a few crashes. Um, just take that money and light it on fire because then at least you'll get a little bit of warmth from it rather than getting the horrible experience of wasting like six hours of your life building the goddamn thing and then having it irreparably damaged on the first crash. Um, 100% guarantee it will fail. No bullshit. If you do, you if you don't want to listen to me and you do build it and you manage to crash it 20 times hard and you can prove that to me and it hasn't broken, I'll give you $74 million. <laughs> <laughs> That's how confident I am. Slide by... Oh, YouTube did the thing. Scrolling back up. Slide by FPV says, What is the longest a crossfire receiver should take to update? Uh, one took three minutes and the other has been going for over six minutes now. Blinking blue on the QS, QX7 red on receiver. Um, uh, slide by. Every time I go to bind a new uh, crossfire receiver... It, it's it's like the first time I've ever done it. Like it's it's never ever ever the same. It's it's always very strange. Um, so I'm not the guy to ask, but I would think that six six minutes would be enough. Um, I get that same situation that you're having right now all the time, where it blinks blue on the QX7, red on the receiver forever. Um, so yeah, I, I would just I would just unplug and and redo it. Um, yeah. Maniac FPV says, what's up? T-Bird says, what's up? Um, Richard says, watched a clip of a DJI Phantom that Steel made into a kiss. Oh, that's an old video. Uh, found a DJI Air for five bucks on eBay. Uh, I wanted to gut it and turn it into a freestyle rig. I changed my mind. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you've done everything else... Um, then, uh, then, then maybe that's something to do. But until you've done everything else, build something better. <laughs> build something that'll fly better. Rasta nineteen seventy nine with a two pound super chat. He says how to set the midpoint uh, for DJI RC in beta flight. Um, I hate this Rasta because you gave me your hard earned money. Um, I unfortunately have zero experience with anything DJI. Um, so all I can do is beg the collective in the chat here to answer your question, um, which is, is, yeah, is, I guess as long as your question gets answered, um, then I don't feel too bad. Um, but sorry, dude. Yeah, um, the, the DJI V2 goggles um, do have a way to monitor them. So uh, at some point... Uh, hopefully I'll be able to um, snag a set of these uh, V2 goggles. Uh, that's one of the big things that's keeping me from, go that has been, ha has up until this point, um, kept me from going to DJI is that um, there's just no way to, I mean, there's no uh, rationally, <laughs> there, there is a way, but it's it's like $11 billion to do it. Um, so yeah, at, at some point, um, if if this whole thing, FPV thing keeps growing and growing and growing, um, I'm gonna be able to uh, jump into DJI. But uh, as of right now, I, I have like I've flown DJI uh, twice, uh, and it was it was pretty cool. The goggles fit horrible, and they hurt my face really bad. But I was able to see where I was going. It was crazy. Um, so yeah, at some point I'll know DJI things, but at the moment I just don't know a single thing, unfortunately. Um, but I have faith in the awesome people in the chat that they're gonna answer your question and hopefully they're even gonna tag Rasta1979. I'm even gonna drop his name in the chat. Ra I'm dropping your name and then I'm dropping the question. There we go. Um, so yeah, I bet you somebody answered your question in the chat. Um, if they don't, message me at CIDFPV anywhere, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and every single stream I do, I will ask that question until I get an answer for you. <laughs> Tiago, uh, Maniac FPV with a $5 super chat, he says, for healthcare, 
maniac care, if you will. <laughs> I like it. I like it, maniac. We are going on the board. 268 becomes 273. Thank you, my man. Very kind of you. Maniac care. <laughs> uh, Tiago Roma says you owe me $70 million. <laughs> Tiago, you don't actually have a, a pinned stack that hasn't blown up, do you? It's just an impossibility. Um, Experimental RC says, I'm gutting my Phantom 3. I've been flying since 2009. Um, I guess if you already have the Phantom, it, it makes sense, right? Um, but buying one, although, I mean, if you can buy one for like five bucks, I guess it, it would be a funny project. Um, uh, Zanaka says, major difference between a DJI flight controller versus a standard analog flight controller. Uh, I'm still uh, on analog for a bit longer. Uh, the difference, Nevin, is... Uh, so Zanakis FPV, for anybody that doesn't know, that's Nevin. Um, he is a doctor, like, putting his, his life on the line every day um, with COVID in ERs, so... Um, amazing dude, right? Top to bottom. But he's also so the, the creator of FPV Exchange, which is a super, super, super cool website. Your boy Ciotti FPV is now an official vendor over there, too. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, what did I do? There we go. Oh, no. Is that it? There it is. Look at this, man. Look at that. Look, it's me. I got 50 Karma. I joined a month ago. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Look, all my social stuff. And look at this. Look at this. All the things. You can just go in here. And then look, I'm selling a bunch of stuff through uh, FPV Exchange. Look, 3B Hobby 2306s. Some shirts. Look at that. Look at your boy. Um, so yeah, get on over to FPVExchange.com. It is a super, super, super cool website. It'll allow you to import... Everything that you've ever bought from RDQ, Pyrodrone, GetFPV, all the big resellers, you can click like four buttons, I think, and import everything you've ever bought. And then all you got to do is flip a little lever, a, click a little switch button, and that item is magically for sale. And so like if somebody goes on to FPV Exchange, right, one of the ways that people use this website is they type in Crossfire Nano, right? And what's really cool is it'll pull every listing from all over the place for the Crossfire Nano, right? So like this listing here has 22 hits. So you can price shop and it'll show you all the different spots where that thing is. So you can go through here and be like, oh God, uh, Nevin selling one for 35, I don't want that. Mike Chen selling one for 29.95. Or if nobody is selling them used, right? You can scroll down a little bit and you can see, oh my God, ready-made sells it for 25, but then uh, Drone Racing Parts has it for 26. Well, screw Drone Racing Parts. Um, so you can price shop on here, but then like on top of price shopping, like what other website can you sell your used stuff in the same spot as FPV Crate, as Get FPV, as uh, FPV Cycle, Boulder Multirotor, Ready Made RC, right? Like, you're not going to get that anywhere else. Um, to be honest, the thing that I like is that, like, when I decide that I want to sell something, I just click a button. I don't have to take pictures of it. I don't have to write about it. I don't have to deal with all these idiots on Facebook Marketplace lowballing you. You just flip the switch. It's for sale. Maybe somebody will buy it. Um... Get on there. It's really cool. Look at all these people selling Crossfire Nanos. That's super dope. Tweet FPV is selling one. Tweet FPV is selling two. Mike Chen selling one. Nevin selling one. Geo Fairbanks is selling one. Look at all these people whose names we know. Um, so yeah, go to... Uh, I forgot to ask Nevin if I could do this, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to drop my CID FPV link to... FPV exchange in the chat. Maybe that'll work. Maybe that's my personal link. I don't really know. Uh, but if it works, it'll bring you to all the things that uh, that the, that I'm selling on here. Uh, all right, cool. I did want to show you guys that, and now I did. Look at me go. Um, what happened to the chat? What did it do? The it did the thing. Um, Richard said, oh, 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 uh, Nevin, uh, the answer to your question is, 
a plug header, typically uh, a DJI or HD flight controller uh, will have a plug header specifically with the things that you need for the DJI system so that it's as plug and play as possible uh, and a 9 volt uh, BEC to power the uh, to power the damn thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, those are pretty much the two things that you get from an HD flight controller versus a regular old uh, whatever flight controller. Um, uh, Richard says, the other day I saw a quad on rotor builds that had a croc slipper as the frame. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that too. Um, when my allergies are about to go bananas, my nose starts itching. So I got that going for me. Maybe you guys will get to see yet another allergy attack live on stream. Uh, Forevermore says, I'm just getting into DJI so I know nothing yet. <laughs> Forevermore, me too. Uh, it sounds like you're going to learn about it before I do, so I'm going to be hitting you up <laughs> for, with my questions. <laughs> um, let me know how it goes, man. Let all of us know how it goes. Frank Nicholas says, DJI TX settings midpoint is no different than any other controller. Um, so there you go. Look, there you go. Looks like there's no, uh, there's nothing weird um, about about it uh, forevermore. Um, but again, if you can't get your questions answered, hit me up, and uh, I will just bug the shit out of the chat, uh, <laughs> or the people that I know that are on DJI. Actually, is what I'll do. Uh, License to Drive says uh, I've been into trance music for 30 years. Please check out my 12 favorite tunes. Sometimes uh, Goosebumps trance. Very cool license. Copying link address. All right, there we go. Um, Frank Nicholas says, uh, the link took us directly to what you are selling. Very cool. Uh, I'm going to add that link to cidfpv.com. Let me just open up a, a tab with link tree in it. Come on, come on, come on. Now, you know what? I'll do it right now. Linktree is what uh, CIDFPV.com drives to, and here's how Linktree works. There's no reason not to make your own Linktree. It's really nice to have. Um, oh, I already have a link to FPV Exchange. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I can just change it. Uh, here's my link to FPV Exchange down here. And so if I just go here to edit, I can do that. Hey, look at me go. Doing internet things. Okay, cool. Um, Forevermore says, me and Vampire4097 are both rolling into the digital game. Thanks, Frank Nicholas. Awesome. Uh, and then License to Drive says the Concrete Angel tune could be perfect for the right van bando footage. Awesome license. I'll check it out tonight. Hey, I'm caught up on the chat. Now we can do some things, and it's only 11.15. That's pretty good. Usually Monday nights are, um, like two hours of Q&A, uh, which I absolutely love. Um, but since I'm so fast and organized and let's, uh, let's take a look at, how am I going to do this? Uh, how can I do this? Um, can I, I wonder if I can do it like this. So if I split, if I split it up here, I can like put things here to show you, but then, okay. Right, I think I know how I'm going to do this. Hold on. Let me turn the, uh, let me turn the room lights on real quick so that we get a little bit more light on the floor. Office, cool white. Okay, cool. Hey, look at that. All right, so here we go. Get out of here, socks. Um, here's the uh, here's the speedy box. Here's one of the three speedy boxes. And. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you guys what, yeah, I'm just going to give you guys an idea of like what's in here. 
Um, here's, uh, so that on the top of the box is all the stuff that I'm adding. Here's like a million XT60 and XT30 leads with a, a ton of wire. Uh, this is a, uh, a balance lead kit uh, with 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S balance leads. Um, <laughs> this is a bag of like super random stuff uh, that, that I put in there couple of like uh, barrel extender jib jabs, uh, little, uh, little uh, one of these, I don't know what that's called, you guys know better than I do, uh, 4S uh, balance lead extenders, could be nice for like a little charging setup, uh, a million of the little, uh, of the little run cam and Caddx and Fox ear controller things. Uh, a whole bunch of beepers, uh, another one of the little OSD menu things, um, <laughs> one single individual ESC, <laughs> uh, a, a whole bunch of VTXs, uh, VTX03, yeah, there's just a bunch of VTXs in here, XM Plus in here as well, little run cam camera controller thing. A uh, bunch of standoffs that I had randomly sitting around that are kind of like scratched up. Uh, TBS Unify uh, mounting board thing. Uh, bag of, uh, of breakout cables. I don't know if they're actually called breakout cables, but you know what I mean. Oh, a little set of uh, Fat Shark diopters. Um, little bag of 4S balance leads. Uh, <laughs> A set of these Lumineer 2407 motors with a, uh, a big-ass note on them that very specifically says these motors fall out of the air, so only like maiden these over grass, but uh, they could be good for, for checking out if this motor size works with a, a certain weight propeller. Uh, a whole bunch of 3D printed randomness. Um, a ton of battery straps here, another XT60, I should put that in that bag there. Um, weird RC crazed goggle strap. Um, so now we're getting into, so one of the rules is you gotta take something. You can't just add to it, like it's not just a dumping ground, like you gotta take, you gotta take something. Um, so I took, I, I like, I'm in desperate need of foam feet. Uh, so I took the, the four foam feet that were in there, um, and then I took these uh, T-Motor uh, 4943 propellers, which is, it's funny that these were in here because in the January FPV crate, uh, there were three sets of these. Three sets of propellers is like kind of just barely enough uh, for me to get a feel for the propellers. But this means I have six pairs of these propellers, so I can really give these a shot. And I'll do a, uh, I'm gonna start doing propeller review uh, edits for you guys. Um, so yeah, I took those foam feet and I took these propellers, um, and then I'm adding, and then I showed you guys a lot of the stuff that I added here. Um, just to give you an idea of what this box came with, um, soldering iron with extra tips, uh, R9M access uh, that's been uh, currently flashed with, uh, well, it can be flashed with Express LRS. Um, a fucking, a TBS micro. Um, yeah, like module, like a micro module. There's some really good stuff in here. Um, I'm, I'm like shocked that that people are donating such good stuff. Uh, this is something else I threw in, a little Aomway 20 by 20 VTX. Um, a set of Johnny props. Uh, I, th <laughs> I threw in this wacky set of Emacs uh, Baby Hawk 2.3 inch propellers. Um, oh, there's a whole bunch of flight controllers and there's a whole bunch of AIO <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay. For anybody that thinks I'm being too harsh on AIOs, um, there are like four 30 by 30 AIO flight controller ESCs in here. You want to know why? Because they suck and nobody wants them. <laughs> They're actually not that bad as long as you put them on those rubber, uh, those rubber standoffs. 
Um, that's a lie. They're terrible. Um, uh, there's a solder sucker in here. There's a bunch of goggle foam in here. Uh, a bunch more XM pluses. Just like good stuff, guys. Like there's a whole bunch of good stuff. So uh, Speedy, if you're still in here, drop that link again to the uh, to the Patreon page because this is a really cool product. More XM pluses. This is a really cool project um, that he's doing. And uh, oh yeah, look at this. A whole bunch of these wall hangers, 3D printed uh, quad wall hangers. Just really cool stuff, man. Really, really cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I took uh, I took my couple of things out and added some good stuff. And I will be shipping this out uh, to the next person. Maybe tomorrow. Usually Tuesdays I do uh, a good amount of shipping. So, yeah, man. Speedy Turtle, killing it. Just killing it. Uh, this came in the mail today. This is uh, the February FPV crates. So look out uh, tomorrow for a, uh, a review stream, or an unboxing stream, rather, with, uh, with those fellas. Uh, it's way too bright in here. Let me fix that real quick. Uh, also in the mail today, uh, showed up one of the new style GNB um, 1500 mAh batteries for the high speed rig that I've been doing some testing on. Hey, I flew the uh, I flew the high speed rig again the other day on these Dow uh, 5249 propellers that I've had forever. Um, they were really good. Uh, I I still think I like the Gemfan 5152s, but. I was pretty shocked. I, I, I thought I remembered these uh, being a little jello-y, um, but these were really good. You can sometimes find these on clearance. Uh, they didn't sell very well. Dal Foxier uh, 5249. Pretty good. And they come in the right color. So, you know, double points. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is another uh, battery option for this rig, which should be interesting. Um, yeah, this is the high speed rig. It's a, it's a glide with a 40 millimeter hero eight mount, uh, six inch arms and, um, that's about it. Akon AK32, 55 amp, big boy ESC. Um, yeah. Fun rig. Chase rig. If, uh, if a regular quad can't keep up with the... If, if there's like a drift layout that's really big, uh, where those guys are getting into like third gear, um, that rig is going to be able to run pretty much any of those guys down. Uh, I also got a set of the new floppy proppies, uh, 3015. These are uh, the only other three inch foldable props are Dal, and from what I've heard, they are not balanced. Uh, they're also very heavy. These, uh, they, they on the Dow ones, they use the same big ass uh, hub as with the five inch propellers, which there's no reason for on a three inch rig. Um, these gem fans are actually T mount. Look at this. Wait, no. Look at that. T mount folding propellers. What a time to be alive. Am I right? I can't wait to snap these together while I'm watching uh, TV later. Uh, oh, look at these. Gemfan is now making a three inch tri-blade Cinewoop propeller that's set up for M5 nut or T-mount. And that's pretty awesome because this means for the first time ever, I can head to head test the the Cinesplore with the 1804s versus the Cinesplore with the 2004s. And that makes me really happy um, because I think that 1804s are enough. Um, but there's never been a propeller option that really 
I've just never been able to do that. So th this is actually a really big deal. Th these propellers are a really big deal for me. I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to testing this. I've got my my 4S Cinewoo batteries ready to go. So yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Um, and then I got some of these uh, Foxier Lollipop UFL antennas. And <laughs> And I didn't even realize it, but they give you two. I, I, I it, it doesn't say it anywhere in the listing that it comes with two of the damn things. Um, so yeah, hopefully they're durable. Uh, the the problem I've had classically with Foxier antennas is that they just explode um, when I like turn my head too quickly and look at them. It's crazy. They just, I'll be sitting here talking to you guys, and I'm like, yeah, and then. Uh, all right, scrolling back up, it, it's it's actually getting hot enough in this room uh, that I might have to open the doors. Kristen is not out there, so I don't feel bad doing this. It is just next level hot in here. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> It's like, wow, it's got to be like 20 degrees colder outside in the, uh, in the living room out there. That's absurd. Um, okay. Let me, let me scroll back up here and find my place. There we go. Frank Nicholas says, uh, you broke your FPV exchange link tree link. Uh, it was a YouTube link you pasted. <laughs> okay. All right, Boomer learns to internet. Uh, let me click this, copy link address. Thanks for the heads up, Frank. Well, people trying to get there would have uh, would have gotten to see some some fancy flying, I guess. All right, fixing that right now. There we go. All right, look at me go. Cool, thanks for the heads up. Um, thanks a lot, YouTube. There we go, slide by says uh, splits, yoga with Ciani FPV. Um, speaking of, uh, so, I'm gonna try my best. So, over on the the FPV therapy Facebook group, um, a few people had asked me to do streams specifically around mental health and and yeah. And uh, I've done I think three of those streams. I call it uh, Therapy Thursdays, and uh, they are unlisted streams because a lot of people don't understand. Uh, mental illness and when you don't understand something you can very easily be a total shithead about it um, Not on purpose, right? Just like because a lack of understanding of things tends to make you a shithead, right? Uh, those streams get posted on the Facebook group uh, and they also get posted on a Patreon only text channel on the discord um, yeah, on Discord, uh, and I think I also throw those links up on on the Patreon channel itself. Um, those streams are very difficult for me to do for a number of different reasons. Um, uh, one of the big ones is that I'm not a trained professional. I'm I'm just a guy who has had mental illness all of his life. Uh, who in his mid twenties realized that it, it was a thing. Um, started going to talk therapy um, and have been to four or five or six different talk therapists over the last 15 or so years. Um, and just talking about these things on the internet, right, is is scary and, and it's weird. And, and here in the U.S., um, there are some pretty nasty pre-existing condition rules Um our healthcare system is just a complete train wreck here in the U.S. Um, uh, 
the the Affordable Care Act was a was a, a the original version of the the Affordable Care Act was wonderful, um, and then people with with and then, then greedy people got a hold of it and it went to hell. Um, the rest of the world has figured it out, so it you know <laughs> it can be figured out, uh, but it, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, and and the the current you know currently our healthcare is a real mess and um yeah putting stuff out there is unfortunately risky um and it's scary and and it's also very tough for me to talk about that shit um just in general right like it's 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 very hard um but i'm going to try to do one this thursday um and it's mainly going to be surrounding um yoga and meditation uh, the Healthy Gamer GG on YouTube uh, has been unbelievably, and, and on Twitch, has been incredibly helpful for me. The Healthy Gamer GG. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a link here in a second. And there it is. So there is uh, Dr. K. Uh, his first name is Alok. He decided after failing out of uh, medical school that he was going to go to India and become a monk. Uh, right before that was scheduled to happen, he met a woman who eventually became his wife. Um, so he didn't actually end up becoming a monk. A monk. He came back to uh, the U.S. and uh, became a uh, and, and got through medical school and became a psychologist uh, who specifically works uh, with gamers and and works on gaming addiction uh, one of dr. K my, my favorite like he, he one of his uh, sayings and, and he's got this on one of his um, fleeces is AOE healing area of effect healing um, and that's really what he's doing. Um, that is the whole point of Healthy Gamer GG uh, on YouTube and on Twitch. And what he does is uh, like one to two hour live streams with streamers. Um, and it, it functions as a therapy session, basically. Um, and like, you want to learn about some of the shit that's going on up here? Just start watching, man. Just Just dive in pick from some of these popular uploads um you will hear things from these like a lot of these streamers are a little bit younger than us um which is actually really nice because they are they have come up in this generation of social media and like the internet um and there are so many parallels um so yeah give it a shot i think you're really gonna like it um one of the things that Dr. K like totally sold me on, so to speak, um, is meditation and, and yoga, thus Kristen's yoga mat behind me. Um, it's something that I've done every single day this year. I have not missed it. Um, and it has, I know this sounds silly, but it, it has changed my life. Um, I'm a very sedentary person. I don't like to exercise. I don't like to get sweaty. Um, yoga i don't get sweaty and then yoga prepares me for meditation and meditation has had this effect on me where it just like for whatever reason when i wake up in the morning it's just chaos like there's just like all of these things that are all bundled up um and after 20 to 30 minutes depending on on how much time I have on that given day um, of yoga and meditation, I'm able to function as a human being and just move around like with purpose and with like a path in my brain rather than 8,000 things pulling me in 9,000 <laughs> different directions um, where I'm just like all day long, just like, oh, I gotta, uh, no, no, wait, no, over here. Wait, I'll, let me just fix it. Oh, I forgot about that thing for me. Oh, let me just do that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, give it a shot. Um, don't try it once. Don't try it twice. Try it for two weeks. Try it for three weeks. Try it for a month. Um, if you go to Dr. K's channel and you search, um, 
If you guys didn't know this, this right here is the best part about YouTube. Um, on anybody's channel, you can click this and search their entire channel for yoga. And if you do that, um, his mental health boot, boot, boot camp here, Mindfulness Yoga Meditation, this has the, the yoga routine that I do. It's very simple. It's like super geared towards beginners. Um, he, he dips into meditation here. Um, but he goes into third eye meditation, which is very, very, very challenging. Um, I've been third eye meditation is targeted to, uh, ego work, uh, which is something that I'm working really hard on, uh, with, with my current therapist. Um, but it's very, very, very difficult. So the third eye meditation might not be where you want to start. Um, he has other uh, he has other videos dealing with with meditation. What's really cool is that the yoga prepares you for the meditation. The, the yoga gets you out of your own head. It stops you thinking in the future. You start thinking about like what you're actually doing, and it really prepares you for the meditation so that you have some chance of actually having meditation do something. Here's a good one: ten minute meditation right here. This is what you want. See what he's doing with his hand. This is what you're going to do with your hand. He he shows you to do it like this with with your with your ring finger out, which is really hard. Just do this. Just do this symbol. And what he's going to show you is that you just breathe in. Change, breathe out. Breathe in. Change, breathe out. Breathe in. Doing this with your hand just gives you something to think about. Because a million thoughts about the future and the past are going to come in. And without something like this to give you something to think about, to remind you what the hell you're doing, the whole meditation is just going to be thinking about tomorrow, the next day, everything that's going on in your life. Um, he's got a lot of different... See, so he's got another one here, how to choose meditation. This is what I really dig about him. He, he mixes Eastern and Western uh, medicine... And he tells you about specific meditative techniques to target ego work, to target anxiety, to target depression, so that you're not just like, to me, previous to, to him, I thought meditation was just sitting cross-legged and... And that was it. That's all I thought it was. And I tried that a bunch of times and it didn't work. Go figure, it, 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 right? That's like just meditation that the movies tell us. Like it's, it, there's so much more to that. I mean, think of it this way. How many billions of people are there, right? In Asia and South America and that whole region of the planet that do this stuff every single day. Do you really think that every single one of those people is a woo-woo crazy person? They're not. If you think that they are, you're wrong. Um, so yeah, give it a, give it a try. Um, but don't just try it once, try it a bunch and I think you're going to like it. Um, if not, you'll just be a little bit calmer and your blood pressure will have gone down and then you'll decide that maybe you don't like it and that's okay. You'll, you'll live a little bit longer because you chilled the fuck out for 20 or 30 minutes for, for a week or two. Um, I think you're gonna dig it though. Um, watch some of his popular uploads. Um, it's gonna change your life, I think, if if you're willing to listen and and if you're willing to like actually do the work and and try to improve your your life, really. Um, because it's not it's it's not easy. Like like what I'm, I'm not saying that you can just watch his videos and magically you're gonna be better. Like there's work. Like just like anything, um, there's work involved. Uh, but the work is really, really worth it because it makes your life better. <laughs> like, straight up. <laughs> Especially if you suffer from mental illness. Um, so check it out, man. The Healthy Gamer GG. Uh, amazing guy. Very, very intelligent. Um, and just the way that he... You'll see. You'll see. So go check it out. Uh, Yoga with Ciotti FPV this Thursday. Maybe. Uh, License to Drive says, sad day today, Daft Punk split up. That is sad. 
they've had a, a hell of a career though. Um, a group like that that's been around so long, it's probably a good thing that they split up because they probably split up because they weren't making good stuff anymore. Um, so, and hey, all things have to come to an end. B-Man says, how do we get involved with this box? Uh, Speedy Turtle dropped the Discord link a couple... Yeah, there he is. He dropped it. Uh, you probably saw it, B-Man. Uh, Nick Sebring says, just wanted to say thank you for your rant on the AIO. I found a 14x14 14 14 F7 stack by Flywoo. Next payday, maybe. Uh, just got the 1404 Zing V2s. Have to spread it out uh, or I'd be broke. Yeah, I feel that, Nick. 14x14? 14 14? Really? Is that a typo? Um, I'm a big fan of 20x20. 20 20. I've built a 16x16 16 16 before. It was mega small, and it was really hard to build. Um, but, I mean, having the flight controller separate from the ESC, like, that's the big performance increase. 14x14, 14 14, though, that's crazy easy small that's gonna be nuts um i wonder if that was a typo but regardless aios are trash and they should all be burned to the ground uh speedy turtle says thanks for doing us on stream you're certainly welcome brother uh well worth it for such a cool project uh william barlow says what does it take to get into the box thing william uh you should know by now because speedy's been dropping the links around your comment Brian Ladmaral says, I have plenty of stuff to add. How do I get in line? You should also know, Brian, because Speedy's been dropping them links. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, Speedy Turtle says, shrink wrap the Foxier antennas. Uh, absolutely, Speedy Turtle. Um, I, you know, I, I need to do, I, I, I need to find, well, I'll just do it again on stream. Um, I have a whole method for uh, how to prepare, how to prepare antennas for abuse. Um, and I've gone over it a, a few times in the streams, but I, I really need to make a clip out of that. Um, on uh, what I noticed on these is uh, the usually on, on most antennas, there's a seam on the top. Uh, and you always want to get shrink wrap over that seam so that the top part doesn't just fly off. Um, what I really like about these is the seam is on the bottom. So the, the other spot that I always shrink wrap is right down here where the, the UFL cable meets this. Because what I try to do is create a gradual... Uh, angle between these two because what happens with these is when you go crashing through scraggle the the antenna always 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 hangs up on the scraggle and it pulls um and it'll pull the head right off the damn thing so putting shrink wrap down here helps with that because it just makes it uh, a better angle it's not such a sharp uh whatever um but what's going to be cool so usually i have a piece of shrink wrap on top and then I have another piece of shrink wrap here, and then I'll usually put another piece of shrink wrap down here because I mount them on these little jib jabs. Um, but what's gonna be cool on these little guys is I'll be able to kill two birds with one stone and just put the shrink wrap here to hold the seam together and to make a nice angle here. And Fox Ear even put a little bit of glue here, which I've never seen before. Uh, which is really, really cool because I, that was one of my tips too in, in prepping antennas is to take a little bit of, uh, of welder and run a little bead of welder around here just to, again, give it a little bit more pull resistance. Um, so yeah, Foxier did some cool stuff. Um, I'm not in love with how short this cable is, but it will crash really well with the shorter cable. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Double A says, uh, you said 3015s is 15 enough pitch for a 3 inch. Um, we're gonna find out. Yeah, these, I, I'm a little bit worried about that, that these are only 3015. Um, but the, the Gemfan 3016, uh, 3016 rather than 3015, uh, Triblade makes a shocking amount of thrust. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about these. Uh, the folding prop thing, but I, I have a, I really don't like them for flying over concrete because over concrete, if you crash inverted, 
the the propellers are going to fold out of the way and then the motor bell is going to smack into the concrete and it's going to obliterate your motor um so in my opinion the the foldable propellers are really only good for flying over grass um what they're really good for is is over grass with trees because when you go bouncing through scraggle they're going to fold out of the way instead of wedging into the you know that you always get your rig wedged into a, a branch like this and it'll never come out the the folding props will just fold out and and they just they just tumble right as long as you get disarmed it'll just bounce down through the tree plinko style um so yeah i don't know 3015 um is is for lighter weight rigs but maybe if you spin it fast enough um i'll let you know rasta 1979 with a five pound super chat he says for your health care man you're all awesome thank you brother uh, I'm going to, I don't remember the exchange rate, but what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go from 273 to 280 so that we're on that nice round number. And I'll bet you $7 is pretty damn close to, to seven American cheeseburger dollars is pretty damn close to what five pounds would be. So thank you, Ross. That's super cool of you. Uh, thanks for joining the, the big crazy world of FPV as my career. Much appreciated. Abraham says, uh, I'm still down to do the stream anytime you are. Uh, happy to talk about meds and other modalities for effectively treating anxiety and depression uh, from a clinical perspective. Um, Aber, I have now tried to, um, uh, to do Zoom and Skype while OBS is running, and it absolutely doesn't work. Um, so the only thing that I'll be able to do is kind of like have you on standby in Discord, uh, which... Yeah, uh, th like I said, this Thursday is going to be about yoga and meditation, so probably not this Thursday, but um, the next uh, the the next FPV therapy that I do, maybe next week, maybe the week after, it depends on where I'm at mentally. Um, there is going to be one that's surrounding medication, and, and I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, to hopefully hopefully it works <laughs> with Discord. <laughs> Forevermore uh, says, have a good night and later. Thanks for hanging, brother. You're probably already gone. Slide by says, love you, man. Thanks, brother. Abraham says, I graduated medical school. Don't hold that against me. Uh, but I also practice and, I'm a hu and am huge on recommending meditation slash mindfulness to people uh, when they present for mood disorders, anxiety, and depression. Um, yeah, it's pretty... Um, I've... Uh, I spent about three years uh, with a psychologist, psychiatrist, uh, psychologist, uh, juggling pills and, and trying, uh, lots of different cocktails and, um, pills are nice because it takes three seconds to take one. Right. Um, so if you only have an extra three seconds in, in your day, yeah, um, it's an option, but 20 minutes a day of, uh, this very simple thing that that the healthy gamer GG has turned me on to has done more. I mean, like orders of magnitude more than any 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 of those medications ever did for me. Um, and I don't have diarrhea every day, <laughs> which is the biggest issue that I have with all of the um that i had with all of the the brain pills that i took um a lot there your your gut biome has a lot of the same um receptors as weirdly as your brain does um surrounding depression and yeah uh pills for depression are absolutely brutal on your stomach and my stomach is not great anyway so yeah it's it was uh I almost said it was pretty shitty. <laughs> it was literally pretty shitty. <laughs> uh, Tiago says, explain the ego concept, not the normal ego, but the phil uh, philosophy ego. Yeah, good call, Tiago. Um, so the there's a, a common misconception, I guess you could say, about ego. Um, when When most people hear the word ego, they think like the negative side of it, right? Because everybody has always met an egotistical douchebag in their life, right? Um, 
that's not really what ego means. Uh, ego is your autopilot, is, is a way that I think about it. 95% um, of your day, your ego is in charge and your ego is running the show. 5% um, of the day, sometimes when you're flying FPV, you are living in the present. Uh, one of the great things about hobbies and activities that are very uh, mentally taxing, let's say, is that they bring you into the present because your brain has to work so hard on not crashing into the tree um, or the curb, if you're a motorsport idiot like me, uh, or getting shot in the face back when I used to play airsoft, or staying in the groove when I used to play drums, um, that it can't think about the future or the past or uh, any number of other things that are plaguing you. Um, and this is also one of the things that meditation works on is getting is training your brain to be in the present uh, and to let all of these goddamn thoughts that just won't go away for me um, just let them fade away they're gonna come they're, they're still gonna come that's what she said um, but then you're training yourself to let them come and just keep going um, and eventually you get better at kind of quieting them uh, down. Um, so yeah, that, when I say ego work, um, that's what it is. Uh, ego work is the only way that you can affect the person that you are when you're in that 95% of your day. Um, and there are probably things about that person that aren't great. Um, because our ego is generated as a defense mechanism from a very early age. Uh, it starts in teenage years, typically. Um, like, pre-teen, pre you are completely egocentric. The entire world revolves around you. Um, and then typically in your teenage years, you begin to, you're able to think a little bit bigger than that and, and realize like, oh shit, there's other people. <laughs> like, and they're all like me, like conscious, right? Um, and that's hard. And, and your ego is the defense mechanism to make sure that you don't get hurt in that. And over the years, negative experiences in particular and trauma um, do really bad things to, to your ego. And, and they create a person that, uh, for me, I didn't realize that I was. Um, and it's not all the time and it's not a bad thing. Um, it's just the way that it works um so yeah that's what ego is and and ego work is working to the, the first thing that you need to do is identify those things about yourself right because like you don't understand them they're happening on autopilot and and you just don't realize that they're they're there and and it's also very hard to well you're also very defensive right because your ego is your defense mechanism so like if somebody challenges you on those things you're like it's like no, dude, like a debate, right? So two people debating, they're not doing anything with their ego. They're just beating each other with their their point of view. And then whoever has more statistics or, or whatever wins. They're not actually trying to change each other's mind, right? That's not a debate. Um, and that's what ego work is, is trying to do is actually like it, it trains you that when somebody says something that is that is opposite or, or just challenging to your beliefs. Um, the point is to not just, no, 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 no. Here's how I, here's how it actually is. Right. Because that's a debate. Um, the point is to be able to quiet your ego down so that you can listen to them and not just wait for your turn to talk, to tell them how wrong they are. Um, being able to listen to them, actually understand what they're saying and maybe grow a little bit as a human being. Right. Um, maybe you don't agree with everything that they're saying, but if you're actually listening and you allow your ego to shut the hell up for a change, which is hard as hell, um, you might pick, you might pick up on a couple things that do really connect with you. And that ladies and gentlemen, is called personal growth. Um, so yeah, ego is a, is a thing and, and healthy gamer talks a lot 
about ego. I, I didn't really understand it at all. Um, and yeah, it's one of the things that's really changed a lot for me. Um, so yeah, again, check them out. Uh, Chan Wang says, thanks a ton for explaining meditation. Super cool of you to take the time, bro. Uh, my absolute pleasure, Chong. Um, like I said, it has, uh, it's been a really big deal for me this year. Um, and the, and the fact that, that it's looking like it could potentially replace, uh, medication because without health insurance, medication is hideously expensive here in the U S, um, is really, really exciting for me. Um, Medication is certainly not off the table, um, but it's really, really nice to have something right now to, to kind of take its place. Um, good call, Tiago. Gem Fan Hobby is not a moderator because uh, Federico just started using the Gem Fan Hobby account to hang out in these streams. But now Gem Fan Hobby is. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Gem Fan Hobby is, uh, uh, are, they're sponsoring me. And um, yeah, a lot of the, the giveaways have a really nice pack of Gem Fan propellers in them. So shout out to them. Very, very, very cool of them to uh, believe in me. Uh, not many companies do. I've, I've reached out to, to quite a few companies um, about, yeah, things. And um, I've gotten shot, and down, shot down by most. Um, which is totally fine. I'm, I'm kind of still small potatoes. Um, you guys are like very, very, very dedicated, but most companies don't understand that. Um, they just want to see a hundred thousand subscribers. Right. And that makes sense. Uh, these companies have been burned a million times by people with a hundred thousand subscribers that say, Hey, send me some stuff and I'll talk about it on my, on my videos. And then they never do. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, makes sense. Uh, Tiago says, he needs to be blue so we know he's in the house. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Gem fan says, WTF, aren't we? Shame. <laughs> um, Dauntless says, from experience, dab of glue on the seam and where the bottom cap connects to the coax. I'm scratching the cat, by the way. I'm not doing anything weird. Uh, the existing glue will not be tight enough uh, and the top will pop off. Yeah, Dauntless, that's why I do both. Um, although I've had really good luck with just the shrink wrap. I actually haven't done the glue lately. Um, uh, Random FU says, pull resistance. That's it. Uh, you're making this too easy for me. Dauntless says, just a tiny bit of glue. I've had uh, one of four need a dab. Uh, do, 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 do. Frank Nicholas says, have you tried FaceTime while OBS streaming? Does Aber have an Apple device? Um, I haven't tried FaceTime, although... Are you gonna be, yo? Why are you, why are you like this, Harold? Why are you like this? Um, I haven't tried FaceTime. That's a that's a really good idea. Now I can't scroll down in the chat. But look at this guy. Don't have such a mean face, dude. Ow, ow. All right, hold on. Hold on. I'm allergic to cats. I gotta get all the hair off me. Chopper FPV says, thank you and have a good one. B-Man says, this is why FPV is my mental sanctuary. Uh, I'm not thinking about anything else but the rip at hand. Indeed. Dauntless FPV says, uh, please clip Ego starting at one... Fuck you, YouTube. Scrolling back up. Where was I? Where was I? There we go. Dalton says, please clip Ego starting at 148.49. All right, let me do this. 
Oh, I hit the wrong button. All is lost. Copy. Go here. Uh, and I'm going to go into edit. And I'm just going to sneak it in at the bottom. Uh, I'm, and I'm just going to go like that. What is ego? All right, cool. That should work. That should work. Thanks, Dallas. Uh, Toxic FPV says, placed an order for the V2 DJI goggles from Amazon using your link. Nice, bro. Hopefully, I'll have the money in my account still set aside uh, when they are ready to ship. Uh, Toxic, that's basically a $30 super chat that you just did for me, man. Thank you. That is very, very cool. Um, let us know how those are, man. That is awesome. Uh, Gem Fan Hobby says, thanks. We believe in you. Very cool of you to say. Um, look what I got. Speaking of, oh man, where are they? I got the, uh, the Moonlight V2s and apparently I lost them. <laughs> My desk is a hot mess right now. There they are. And I got them in the right color. I got them in red. I'm going to hold off on the, on the, uh, the purple dye thing that I'm going to do. Um, because I realized that most of my rigs have purple LEDs on them already. So they've got the purple LEDs and then I'll have the red and it'll be super amazing. Um, I can't wait to, I, and I got a, uh, I did an Amazon order for the batteries. I got like a million of the batteries coming, uh, for like no money because yeah, they're cheap on Amazon. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, B-Man says, oh God. Not going to read that one out loud. Richard says, show us the cat way ahead of you. Great minds think alike. T-Bird says, what props do I need for Cinesplore V3 with 2004? I was going to order some cloud ducks, too. Um, get uh, T-Bird, get these new ones. Get these new Gemfan ducted 75 mil. Uh, they are now T-Mount, which is amazing. Um, and also get some of the D76 5 blades. Uh, which are also T-mount uh, compatible. So yeah, between these three blades, these are going to be um, these are going to be a little bit more efficient, and then the five blades are going to be a little bit quieter. And uh, yeah, they're both T-mount. So um, Gemfan, thank you, thank you, thank you for these. Um, I can now test head to head. I said earlier uh, my two Cinesplores, 1804s versus 2004s. Um, because I think that 1804s are plenty. Um, I think that this Cinesplore is going to be the jam uh, in terms of like ultimate lightweight Cinewhoops. Uh, more to come this week on that. God, I can't wait to test that. I'm, I'm, I'm so curious. Um, YouTube the thing, scrolling back up. Wooden props with a $10 super chat. Bro, thank you. Yoga and meditation seem to be working for you. I can tell a positive change this year. Good for you, man. Hell yeah, wooden props. Um, thank you, brother. Super, super, super generous of you. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I'm caught up on chat. And it's 12.03 a.m. Look at that. Sometimes things just work out. Uh, let me give you guys a little... A little treat. What can I, what can I play for you guys here? Let's do. Let's go back to 2019. Ooh, ooh. I'll, I'll play you guys something from the bridge, uh, from the bridge in, um, in Charleston because that is to this day still one of my favorite spots. What's this? MVI. From the, oh. Uh, March 12th, 2019, at the bridge. Let's see what this is. Is this any good? Am I flying good here? Maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff right there. All right, cool. Uh, I got a little rip picked out for you guys here that I'm gonna leave you with. I swear to God, if this hard drive doesn't stop spinning up every single time I just 
roll over the open width feature, I'm going to light the building on fire. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, let's fuck with the tune a little bit. Hold on. I'm pushing more P gain in, guys. All right, here you guys go. Here comes a uh, uncut me flying at the bridge. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a little uh, a little copyright free music on top of this. So it's going to be as if I make an edit right now. Um, so here you guys go. Uh, those of you on the Patreon channel or those of you that have subscribed and clicked the bell, I'll see you tomorrow because I do stream every single day for the patrons. The streams are public uh, when I'm streaming. So that's why I say if you're subscribed and you click the bell, you'll be able to see them. Uh, if you want the replays of the daily streams, you're going to have to uh, join the Patreon page for as little as $3 a month. That's $0.10 cents a day and $0.10 cents a stream. That's a pretty good deal. Um, and there's a million other ways for you to support me over at CIDFPV.com. Uh, a bunch of affiliate links. If you find yourself doing an order on Amazon, GetFPV, Umagod.com, FPV Crate, uh, and a bunch of other websites, all you got to do is go to CIDFPV.com first, click one of those affiliate buttons. It's going to take you to a random item. That doesn't matter. You don't have to buy that item. The fact that you click that link is going to put my number in your uh my info in your shopping cart, and then I'm going to get 6% of that whole shopping cart, and that's pretty dope. Um, so here comes, I don't know how good this, uh, I'm just going to pretty randomly pick a uh, copyright free song. Hopefully it's a good one. These are my selects, so they should be good. So enjoy. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for hanging. This has been your... Wait a second. What were we supposed to do? <gasps> we're supposed to do the spreadsheet today. We're going to do the spreadsheet tomorrow. <laughs> Farts. Sorry, guys. I completely forgot. Uh, so I need to edit the title of this video. Oh. Uh, Micro Monday Q&A. Um, mail bag. Yeah, well, we talked micros, I guess. Um, wow. I knew there was something that I was supposed to do. Enjoy a little bit of flying here. We'll do some spreadsheet work tomorrow, if I remember. Um, thanks for hanging out, each and every one of you. I'm going full screen. I'm clicking play. I'm clicking play. Here you go.
I really was trying to keep this frame in good shape so I could take a couple 